Hello, we are going to read the book What's Smaller Than a Pygmy Shrew by Robert E. Wells. As we're reading, I want you to think about a few questions. How small would you say that really small is? Is something you can hold in your hand like a blueberry small? How about a grain of sand? Yes, it's true, we could call these things small, but in this book you'll find much, much smaller things things you could not ordinarily see. Unless, of course, you look through a microscope. This is a pygmy shrew. From the end of her nose to the tip of her tail, she's only three inches long. If you were a pygmy shrew, you'd feel mighty small. Even some toadstools would be smaller than you. If you happened to meet an elephant, you'd probably think you were the smallest thing in the universe. Compared to an elephant, the largest land mammal, she looks very small indeed. But pygmy shrew, you're not so small, not compared to a ladybug. Ladybugs are a kind of beetle, and beetles are just one of many kinds of insects. Pygmy shrews are insect eaters, but they prefer to leave ladybugs alone. They know that ladybugs have a bitter taste. If you were a ladybug, you'd certainly think you were awfully small. For you, a leaf floating in a tiny puddle would be like a boat in a lake. But ladybug, you're not so small. Not compared to the tiny creatures that live in those water drops on your leaf boat. In this water drop, there are two kinds of one-celled animals known as protozoa. Cells are the tiny building blocks that make up living things. Most plants and even animals, even small ones, are made of millions of cells. Our own bodies are made of trillions of cells. Here's a closer look at the protozoa. This one looks like slippers with whiskers. They are called paramecium. The ones that look like blobs are called amoebas. So we have paramecium and amoebas. The whiskers on the paramecia are called cilia. They are like paddles which propel the paramecia through the water. An amoeba moves slowly about by pushing out a part of its body and then flowing into the extended part. Because of this, Amoebas are always changing shape. Paramecium and amoebas are so small you can barely see them without a microscope. During your upcoming science classes, 
you are going to look at a variety of microscopic organisms that are smaller than a pygmy shrew. Using the microscope, you will look at microscopic organisms such as amoeba, like you just saw, the ever-changing flabs. You're going to get to look at paramecium. Remember those were the slippers, the whiskers, and others, including stentor and euglena. Everyone knows you can stretch your mind by thinking big, but do you suppose that it's also possible to stretch your mind by thinking small? Have fun!